Hello again, everybody. Alan Shura here. And it is June 22nd, 2016. Well, there's been a lot of talk about the rodent coil. And I'm just waiting to get my prints done there. But this is a star configuration. It's the most reduced and simplified. So I just thought I would give it a test. I have two amp meters side by side. And we've got the 6 volt battery here. But this battery is run down a bit. It's not at full power. And here is a star pattern. Starship design coil. Which I just decided to quickly test. Wasn't expecting much. And this is a DC bulb, 21 watt in a Ford tail light holder designed for this type of a bulb. So these bulbs are 12 volt, 21 watt DC. So they maintain a constant resistance. And now uh, we'll start to do this test here. The two amp meters, they go up to 10 amp. So the power is going into it, so we'll see if the light lights up, and it does, when I put the negative, the positive is already on there, and what happens to the amp meters with that light, you can see that. So both the input and the output are equal in amperage, roughly. See there, I'm holding a light. And there's not much difference in the voltage either. Because the input voltage, since the battery is pretty low as it is, Registered 5.76. I don't think you can see that, but we'll just check and see here. Five point seven seven volts. That's on the input side and on the output side. Five point seven seven. Still five point seven seven with no load. So we saw that the input was equal to the output. But now we'll try a different condition. We'll start that again. Okay, keeping the light on. And I think that that's, I don't know how many watts, but uh, the most this uh, battery can put out, I guess, is, um, you know, nine watts or so. But I believe that that's just about almost how much that's consuming, maybe a couple of watts less, because it's a 21 watt at, at full brightness. And it's pure straight resistance load. Now, I add this motor, it's a brand new motor, one inch motor, so I have bearings, everything are good in it. And add that to the load. And we can see what happens, uh, I don't know if you could see what happens to the amp meter, but... Can I turn that on?
There you can see the amperage is roughly equivalent. Possibly a hair higher in, on the output. Bit higher amperage on the output, not much. But that could just be error in the gauges. So, what I found was if I took the resistive, resistive load off and put on the uh, mechanical load with the magnetic um, acceleration internally, then I would um, see a ch difference. And so there it is at high speed. Now if you look carefully, there's very little registering on the input side. It looks like more registering on the output side. Check that again. Still touching the black part on the zero of the meter on the input side. On the output amperage, well, we can see some white space past that zero meter. So that's very little power because these gauges go up to 10 amp. So, we can test this with the digital amp meter. And we'll put her to the input side if you can here. It was showing 0 0.13, 0 0.14 of an amp, but I'm sure there's got to be higher than that. We'll say 0.2 of an amp. And on the output side, point oh five nine amp. Point oh two three amp on the input. Point oh two three amp on the input registered by digital. Just to confirm with a second measurement on the output amperage here. Stuff to get a handle on this.
point oh four nine point four eight. So that confirms over unity by both digital and by analog. That confirms over unity by both digital and analog. I just want to see what will happen if I go to the maximum amperage here if the output stays higher than the input and it is higher that's proof positive <clears throat> well that's it for now Incredible with all the talk of the rod and coil, and I really didn't expect anything. But there, you see both digital and analog over unity as measured. <laughs>